All right. Uh, welcome, everyone, to our second week of your first deal after dark. Um, this is with GM Title, our preferred title and escrow company. And Jade Tishka is going to be walking you guys through um, everything to know and learn on um, your first deals with Title. So I'm going to pass it over to her um, and have a great course. Hello everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jay Tishka. I am the client relations manager over at GM Title. Um, and I am going to talk, be talking to you guys about uh, Title, our Title process, GM Title, the services we could offer you, my role in it and just, you know, kind of give you an overview of what the process is and all of that good stuff. Um, I am going to be throwing a lot of information at, um, to you today. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to, you know, just ask shout out. Um, and if you think of something afterwards, I will shoot my contact information in the chat. Um, it will be my cell phone. So feel free to text, call, email, whatever works best for you. All right, I am going to share my screen and get started. Okay. All right, so Title 101. Can you guys see my screen first off? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we can. Okay. Um, so for um, meet our team, first off, like I said, my name is Jade Tishka. I'm a client relations manager. There is my phone number, email. Like I said, that is my cell phone. So feel free to text, call, whatever works best for you. Um, beneath me is Tiffany Handor smith She is the operations manager. That is for her phone number and email. Um, and she kind of oversees everything. She makes all the big decisions, all the complicated issues. You know, she kind of takes a lead on that. And last but not least is Jennifer Novak. She is our customer support specialist. Um, she is the one that is pretty much going to be your main point of contact through all deals through GM Title. Um, we do have a one point contact um, you know, system going on and she is our main point of contact. Um, that is her phone number and that is her email as well. About our company, GM Title believes that partnering with our customers shapes the best results. By everyone working together, services will be delivered more effectively and transactions will close quicker. We approach each business relationship in transac each transaction by communicating clearly and being responsive, um, being innovative and finding solutions, leveraging technology to work smarter and deliver results, offering single point of context that streamline communication and deliver services with a positive and professional attitude. What we need from you. So when we work with us, um, what we'll need from you obviously is the signed contract. Um, make sure all your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed. I can't um, tell you how many times contracts come over and they're either not signed at all or only signed by the seller or buyer. So make sure you send us the complete contract that is fully executed. And please, please, please do not forget to include contact information. Can't do much without that. Um, escrow letters that will be asked up front. Um, the sooner that you have those to us, the better. Um, point of sales, I do have a list with the point of sales, but for those of you who don't know, certain cities require point of sales, which is just pretty much an outside inspection of the property. Um, you'll schedule that online with the city. An inspector will come out and observe the property and see if anything needs to be updated, fixed, repaired, et cetera. Um, each city, depending on obviously where it's sold, has different requirements. Some cities allowed you to allow us to hold the money in escrow. Let's say like a driveway is getting redone. Obviously in winter in Ohio, you can't do a driveway. So we would hold the money until spring when a driveway could actually be repaired. So some cities though don't allow us to hold. So again, it just depends on the city. Um, and any addendums and changes um, such as really anything to do with the property. 
Um, especially if buyer or seller are gonna be out of state at the time of closing, we wanna know that in advance. Well, we do have um, ways to sign them out of state, but it does take a day or two to get the docs back. So we just wanna make sure we have enough time for that. Um, any, if you're moving the date up or you're pushing it back, we need addendums for that. Um, let's say that it is a, anything that we should know. Let's say that a couple is getting divorced and they're selling their home. Let's say the divorce is messy. If they don't talk, please let us know. Um, that avoids a lot of uncomfortable conversations and anything that we need to know about the deal, please, please, please let us know. And this is just kind of the title process. Um, it is lengthy, but this I just wanted to kind of go over with you guys, um, just so you could see pretty much what we do on each deal and the process that we have to go through for each file that um, comes in. So first, when we receive the contract, we order the title exam, water sewer to make sure that there is an, an extreme balance. I've had uh, balances that I came back at like $4,000 before. So we want to make sure that that is under control. And we also order a special tax search. So any other special taxes that are within that city, we'll come back on that search. And we also order a 42 year search on the property for the and a search for the buyer and seller's name. What we look for in that search is liens, foreclosures, bankruptcies, um, the chain of title to make sure it is legit and the judgment liens um, against buyer and seller. After we get our search back, we type up the title commitment and the title commitment is just kind of, I would say about a seven page summary of what is in the search. What we'll come back on that is deeds that are on record, easements, HOA information and any liens on title. That also includes mortgages and lines of credit. Um, if those, obviously, if those do show up, we do need to order payoffs for those. Um, different kinds of liens that would show up there is a mechanics lien, child support lien, state of Ohio tax lien, and IRS liens. Those all do need to be paid off before we close those liens. And then the title process continued. Um, we will contact both the buyer and seller and request buyer and seller information sheets. On um, the information that, um, for instance, the information on these sheets is obviously buyer and seller's full name, social security number for tax purposes, um, payoff information, so loan number, um, anything we need to get a payoff, any HOA information that we need to request information on, and then for the buyer, pretty much how do they want to go on title, um, their full names and social security numbers as well. Without these sheets, um, we cannot process the file. So it is better to have them in sooner or later. So on your buyer and sellers, when you do turn in a deal, just tell them title will be sending you information sheets. Please fill them out as soon as possible. Um, when dealing with an entity, um, let's say the property is in an LLC, a corporation, a trust, or an estate, there are certain documents that we need in order to proceed. We will request those. If um, those documents aren't even created or you know, we need something else, we have a company that can obviously produce them for an extra fee, or we will you know, tell you what further steps need to be taken. Um, I also answer any preliminary questions um, about the deal at that time too. A lot of questions we get are um, have to do with tax prorations um, and later on in the deal, for example, um, signing details, wiring instructions, and you know how much they're going to have to bring to closing or how much they're going to get. So. We answer those questions as well. Um, right when we open the deal, we will also ask you for the escrow letters. Like I said, the sooner the better on those. And we will also verify lender contact information. Um, after that, we should get the title order from the lender. And that is when we send out our closing protection letter, which pretty much protects the, the lender against any fraudulent activity. We'll send them the commitment, the 24 month chain of title, wiring instructions, our prelim CD, and our tech certs. 
Um, we also have to order a location survey, which is when the survey company comes out to the property and takes a survey of the property and make sure there is no fences, patios, anything like that encroaching on the property. Um, we'll order the deed and any payoffs for, like I said, any liens, home equity lines, um, regular first mortgages, anything like that. If there are, are any encroachments or survey issues, we will also notify you. And we will also finish clearing any title issues. And um, we also will send any review or entity documents to underwriting for review. And last page, um, when we receive the clear to close from the lender, that is when we can call all parties and get them scheduled. Um, we try not to schedule, I, even if we can schedule the seller before we get the clear to close, we try not to. Only reason for that being you never know when a lender is going to need the seller to sign an additional document. And every time we send a notary to do a closing, it does cost extra money. So we just want to make sure that we have all the documents for the seller to sign to avoid them paying an extra fee. Um, from there, we will contact all parties to get them scheduled with a notary. And we do have a team of mobile notaries and they can go to whatever location works best for your clients. Um, we will review lender instructions, balance CD, and confirm the amount that the buyers need to bring to closing. Once we get the documents back, we'll process and scan the documents and send to the lender for review and funding approval. Um, from then, the lender will wire us their funds for the mo mortgage amount, and we will prepare items to be paid, dispersed, and ship funds whether it's wire, mail, or FedEx. So your guys' commissions will send the wire out and we will mail whatever we need to do to the appropriate parties. Then we will ship the signed loan documents back to the buyer's lender. Um, from there, we will receive the original documents um, probably a couple weeks after closing. And then we will prepare and process the final title policy and send it out to the buyers. So like I said, I'm not really expecting you guys to Remember all of these steps. I just wanted to kind of go over exactly what we have to do for every file. So even, you know, and why it might take a delay or, you know, we might not have the answer at that exact moment, but we are working on it. Any questions on the title process? I know that was a lot. Okay. And this is our milestone. This is kind of a cool feature that GM title offers. Um, once we get your guys' contract and we confirm it, you guys will get this email. And as you can see, it's kind of a pizza tracker. So it will show you when title and escrow is opened, when the commitment has been generated, when the escrow officer receives the file, when the signing is scheduled, and when the deal is actually complete. Um, as far as I know, GM Title is the only title company around that uses this, and it is an awesome tool. We've gotten a lot of really good feedback on it and people seem to really like it. It helps a lot with the communication and you know, lets buyers and sellers know where we are on the deal. All right, just some common title issues that we come across or you know, might actually delay the um, deal if we don't have everything that we need. I would say number one is the point of sale. Like I said before, that is kind of the outside inspection of a property based on if your city, the city requires it, as well as a well and septic inspection. If a property has a well and septic on it, depending on what county it's in, um, the county does, um, or it may require a well and septic. Um, the sooner you guys could schedule these, the better. I do have a list of point of sales and um, counties that do require well and septic that I would be more than happy to um, drop in the chat after this. Um, any issues with the LLC trust or estate? Pretty much any entity, power of attorney, any divorce that isn't final or the terms weren't met. Um, that's a big issue as well as well as common names. So let's say that there's a Matt Johnson and he's selling his property and there's 50 other Matt Johnsons in the county. And 
one of them has a whole bunch of liens. Well, when we run our search, it can't tell our Matt Johnson versus the other Matt Johnson. So if you have a common name, please let us know right away as well with the last four digits of their social, we'll call them and ask them. And when we get our search back, we can match the four of our per people with the four of the people on title and we can kind of eliminate them that way. That, uh, that issue actually happens a lot more often than people realize. So again, if your client does have a common name when you send it into title, just point that out, you know, say, hey, call for the last four of their uh, social and we'll get it figured out. But it's better to know than not know. Um, any prior owner title issues such as um, a prior owner mortgage, when a mortgage is paid off, um, the mortgage company has to send a release to the county. A lot of times those releases get lost or the company doesn't send them at all. And so it doesn't actually get released from title. So when we go to open title, the previous owner's mortgage is still on there. It's not that they owe it, it's just still on there. So depending on how old that mortgage is, it becomes a bigger problem. Um, any buyer title issues, such as, like I said, child support, um, IRS, and state of Ohio liens. And survey issues. Let's say that the property changes since last time it sold. Let's say there was a neighborhood that was built next to it and some way the lot changed. Um, we would actually have to have someone come out, stake the property, and then rewrite a full new legal description. Um, that's called a boundary survey, and they are very costly. I would say about $1,500 and take about six to eight weeks to do. So you could avoid it, great, but unfortunately, sometimes that does have to be done. Any question on these title issues? Um, do most title companies do a survey every time? Um, if it is a lender deal, we have to do one, yes. Oh, okay, if it's cool. a cash deal and you would like one done, you would just have to let us know and we could absolutely order that for you. Another really cool feature that we offer, like I said, is we have a one point of contact. Um, this is Jennifer Novak. She is the main girl. She, let's say you want an update on our deals. Um, you have a title issue, uh, anything and everything. She is your main girl. So a lot of agents really, really like this as well. It's nice not being able to look back like who's handling this deal. Is it this escrow officer, that one, whatever. Doesn't matter. She is kind of the filter to all questions. You email her and she will get you what you are asking for. Any questions on that? And then last but not least, what can I do for you? Um, I am an extra support person in all of your transactions. I'm also available after hours and on the weekends. Um, what you guys can ask for me is buyer and seller net sheets, tax and legals, open house baskets, um, any general title questions, I do have title experience. Um, so I do understand, you know, majority of the questions and can hopefully give you an answer. I do training for agents just like this. Yesterday, we uh, put on a fair housing CD. So CEs for agents. Um, we also do another a couple of classes, different topics like um, this. For example, I also do an entity class. So I talk about different entities and title the documents we need, why we would need them, et cetera. And then uh, not too long ago, we did a CD Alta class. So really getting it deep into this closing disclosure in the Alta and what each section means and all of that. Um, if you guys have earnest money that needs to be picked up from a client, I don't mind uh, dropping by either office and picking that up. Um, in general, transaction updates. Any complicated situations with any deal or, you know, question for an entity of trust, anything like that. And I'm also a notary. So if you guys need anything notarized for any of your deals, I will be more than happy to help you. And as far as my presentation goes, that is all I have. Do you guys have any questions for me? <clears throat> 
Uh, as far as earnest money for you guys, so typically when a buyer is doing earnest money, do they wire that to you or they send you a check? We actually, either way, we um, on our website, uh, if you go to gmtitle.com, there is actually a uh, tab up, I believe, in the right-hand corner, and it says deposit earnest money, and your clients can actually go on there and deposit it through ACH deposit. All they would need is their debit card. Oh, okay. That's cool. That's really nice. But if they're old school and they're like, I don't know how to do that. A lot of older people prefer to do it the old way checks. Um, mm -hmm. I do not mind coming to the office and picking those up. Okay. That's cool. Cause when I was buying my house, I had to wire it and I was on vacation. So I like couldn't overnight a check and it was, they had, and no, I we didn't can do have it a... directly online. It'll take about yeah. 10 days to come out of the account though, and go into ours just cause it is like a check. So they do kind yeah. of, it acts in the same way. Mm -hmm. um, so it is, does take a little more time than a regular debit situation. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Well, that is all I have. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, my contact information is here. Um, take it down, put it in your phone. And if you need anything, uh, don't hesitate to reach out.